Haleluya, Haleluya, Haleluya. Mande Ukoski, Bradaga, Shantale, Kusadaban, Shata. Father, we thank you for another moment again. Thank you for another opportunity to bring your word to your people. I give you praise. I give you glory. I bless your name in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, I'd like for you to gather around. Zakapato, Lakrish, Kadabados, Katelash, Zekete, Palakatus, Kadabaradara, Zegedo, Poroto, Sitale, Krabados, Kadesia. Ikato talade shabadangados zege dege dege sukata palata. Blessed be the name of our God. Gather around, gather around wherever you're coming from. And please, as soon as you get in there, just indicate that you're there with us so that we'll know that you're there. Just indicate by um by any means, put a like, put a comment, just say one or two things that let us know that you're there. And also do us the favor of sharing share the broadcast so that it can get to a wider audience uh and the wider people you know so that god also can bless people through you today god's hand can come upon people because of you please wherever you are try to connect with us try to share try to like try to comment from wherever you're uh, wherever you're coming from and the good god of heaven will bless you Zagabaka Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. We worship you, oh Lord, Daddy. We worship you, oh Lord. We cannot see you, but we see your wonders. We worship you, oh Lord. We worship you, oh Lord. We worship you, oh Lord. We cannot see you, but we see all your wonders. We worship you, oh Lord. Oh, Tsubarere, oh, oh, Tsubarere, Oh, Calabragada bashanta kusa da brades katilash Iza kusa te talush kabanda landash Saka patata kata bragada banta yagada balaga dosata Ika zuta re tabondalash Sata brago shabalaga degele palakati alagadas Zeka tuska da brandesha da balos kadesha Esata kapa shapa kata pataka Zuka taka la parekete ke lituka la daya Father, I arrest the atmosphere in the name of Jesus Christ, I take charge of the atmosphere. I take charge of the internet space. I take charge of the network. And I take charge of the hearings of your people. As many that get connected, as many that come under the influence of this broadcast, that come under the influence of this message, that come under the influence of this video, I decree that deliverance will hit them. The power of God will meet them wherever they are, wherever they are, in whatever shape they, they are in, in whatever condition, in whatever situation, in wherever they find themselves in life. I decree and declare the release of the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to invade life, to invade the space of people, and Lord, to bring about deliverance, to bring about uh, freedom from captivity, freedom from bondage, to the glory and to the praise of your name in the name of jesus christ of nazareth wherever you are tonight this is your night it's the night and it's the day that god has made and the bible said we'll rejoice and be glad in it this is your night so my name remain wilson i see the one of the assay and i'm the senior pastor of land of grace ministry listen to me this is what we call word fire it's an online program it's a program that we 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 where we gather and pray and make prophetic declaration according to the leading of God over the lives of God's people. It is is every Saturday and every Wednesday, 9 p.m. West Africa time. So for wherever you are coming from, ensure to connect with us in the spirit of faith. 
trusting in the Lord for a miracle. And that miracle will come your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, we'll be looking at what I titled as transgenerational battles. Transgenerational battle. These are the kind of battle that was left for you. The battle or the battles that uh, was fought generations before you were born. Uh, you can also call it... Uh, you can also call it, um, yes, transgenerational because I wanted to use the word um, reincarnated battle. Yeah, reincarnated battle. That is to say battle that you fought in your previous life that came upon you in the life where you now find yourself. Now, because I mentioned the word reincarnation, I'm quickly going to uh, make a very clear statement on the issue of reincarnation so that you can understand me. Now, reincarnation, we do not believe in reincarnation based on the way the world defined it, based on the secular uh, definition, where they believe that as a soul, when you die, you have the capacity to come back to life again, maybe af after some period of time, or after some time, you can you can reincarnate and come back in the same body or through another body or something like that. Instances are, in some cases, where they say there are some mark in some people's body before they die, or when they were once alive. They said they have some kind of mark in their body, and after they are dead, uh, and someone else within the family, or somebody else in the area or something, um give uh, uh gives birth and then and then you now later also see the same mark in the body of the child that is now newly born you know we do not believe or define reincarnation that way uh, our own way of reincarnation is that the spirit of your assignment can can return that is to say the spirit of your assignment would always come back first thing and first concept of uh, uh first concept that you need to have about the issue of about the issue of reincarnation is who is the spirit of man what is the spirit of man going by the book of genesis chapter number seven chapter number two verse seven the bible told us that god breathed the life-giving spirit into the man and the bible also told us that the spirit of the lord is the breath of man that the spirit of the man sorry is the breath of the lord is the breath of the almighty then the bible also told us in the book of um the book of ecclesiastics chapter number 12 as we begin reading from verse six downward the Bible said that when a man dies, you know, the spirit will return back unto God, the God who gave it. The spirit return back to God. It doesn't go for judgment. It doesn't go to hell. It goes back to God. It is his nostril, just like we breathe in, um, we breathe uh, in oxygen and then we breathe out carbon dioxide. You know, Why the plants take in carbon dioxide and then they release it's all oxygen. So that's, how, that's the way it is. We are interconnected to God like that through his spirit and so when a man dies that part of his spirit that was in you that part of breath that was in you goes back to him and when it goes back to him he have the capacity to breathe it or to breathe that same breathing upon another vessel and then that vessel can continue with the assignment and with the purpose with which the lord has, uh, appoints you for now this is what we mean by reincarnation let's take for instance uh when the lord Call Elijah the prophet, used him tremendously. As he was about to leave, you saw that the mantle of Elijah fell to Elisha. That is to say that uh, the spirit of Elijah came upon Elisha. How can you define that? As a matter of fact, in First Kings chapter number three, the Bible told in First Kings sorry chapter number two, the Bible told us that even the sons of the prophet they affirm it. They said the spirit of Elijah. The second Kings chapter number two, they said the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. How can you offend that? That a man who, who is not yet dead, his spirit can be upon another man. His spirit can rest upon a man that is still alive. What happened is that God took the spirit of his assignment, the, the spirit of his assignment and mission on the face of the earth and release it or release him in another vessel. That is to say Elijah. That's the person doesn't have to be dead for his spirit to be released. Yes, of course, the person may be dead for his spirit to be placed in another vessel. It doesn't mean that the soul of the man have to come back because when a man dies, what happens is that the spirit goes back to God, goes back to the nostrils of God. Uh, then the, then the, the body goes to the earth and decay. You find that in Ecclesiastes chapter number 12. Chapter number 12 from the seas going downward. Now, the body decays on the earth. Then the next thing that happens is that the soul goes before God 
and face judgment. In the book of Leviticus, you hear the Bible say, the soul that sin it, it shall die. The soul that sin it, it shall die. In Ezekiel chapter number four, chapter number 18, you hear the Bible said, the soul that sin it, it shall die. So it's about the soul facing judgment, not the spirit. The flesh decays on the earth. The soul is the actual man because Genesis chapter two, verse seven, the Bible said, and God uh, formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril. And the man became a living soul. We are talking about the soul of man we're talking about the issue of reincarnation now if you understand this clearly um i want you to quickly understand that there are battles that you may have left behind that have the capacity to continue uh in your knowledge and your stream of life your stream of life the stream of life means people that um people that were in your phase of contact your stream of life mean your family members your stream of line mean uh, people that were connected to you one way or the other. There are battles that you may not be able to fight right now that will linger on and you will continue to see that battle going on in the family. Let's take for instance the battle between Elijah and Jezebel. First Kings chapter number 19. First Kings chapter 19. I'll just read verse 1, then down to verse uh, down to verse 3. He said, And Ahab told all that Elijah had done, and with the how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message, a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow. About this time, then when he saw that he when he saw that he arose and went for his life, and came to Beer Sheba, which belongeth to Judah. I left his servant there. The Bible is telling us about the battle between Jezebel and Elijah. Now, El El uh, Elijah was particularly selected by God and anointed to bring down Jezebel and the throne of Baal and Ashtoreth, Ashtoreth that they brought into the land of Israel. God particularly selected Elijah to to put an end to that occultic, uh, occultic uh, spirit that Jezebel brought into the land of Israel. But you see, Elijah did to an extent and became afraid. He, he called down fire. He destroyed 400 prophets of Baal. He called down fire from heaven. He restored the rain. He proved to the people that God is the greatest. Half of the people of Israel had turned back unto God. The Bible said that Ahab, the king, and the husband of Jezebel got back home and then told Jezebel about everything that Elijah had done, how he, Elijah had slain 400 prophets of Baal, how God has used Elijah mightily to turn the heart of the people back to God. The Bible said that Jezebel became furious and Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah and said, so do the gods unto me. If I do not make your life as the life of one of those prophets that you have slain, as the life of one of those prophets that you have killed, as you have killed. The Bible said in verse 3, in verse 3, he said, when Elijah, he said, and when he saw that, when Elijah saw the threat, when Elijah understood the threat, now this threat was beyond normal, was beyond the natural. It was beyond, I will do you this, I will do you that. No, the man saw it in the spirit realm. He saw the threat, he saw what would be for him he saw what would happen to him the bible said that elijah quickly rose up and fled for, for his life he rose up around elijah the great servant of god a man that have god with him a man who god is with a man that carried the fire a man who is the custodian of the prophetic a man that carried the fire of god the bible said he rose up and fled for his life and you know the funny thing he abandoned his servant he ran away he left them. He left them. He left them in Judah and fled for his life. Then he took some journey to go and seek God. While he was running, he was telling God in verse 4, he said, I'm not better than my father. The last sentence there, he said, I'm not better than my father. In other words, these battles that my fathers couldn't stop, you know, that I've been involved in, that I've been trying to stop, I'm not think, I don't think that I can be able to do it. I don't think that I have the strength or I'm better qualified in the position of stopping this battle, of ending this battle than my fathers. 
these was were the statement of elijah the servant of god and that's how he abandoned the battle and left long story cut short in that same genesis in that same first first king chapter 19 god okay don't worry there's no problem hence you are not better than your father you want to die you want to leave this world god said there's no problem you're going to anoint elisha to become a prophet instead of you you are going to anoint a uh, you're going to anoint jehu to become the king of israel you are going to anoint asahel as a hell to become the king of syria and god said thus said the lord anyone that escaped the sword of elisha anyone that escaped the sword of asahel shall jehu slay anyone that escaped the sword of jehu shall elisha slay and and god said I've kept unto me 7,000 prophets in Israel that has not kissed the feet of Baal. Now, Elisha did as God commanded him. He anointed Elisha. He anointed Elijah did as God commanded him. Anointed only Elisha. He didn't anoint the rest, two of them. Now, after anointing Elijah, the next, before, uh, the, the next thing was that God took him. God took him. He left the face of the earth and went to be with the Lord. With a white wind, he was, he was honored. And while he, he left, the Bible said that his mantle, Elisha, had already placed demand on his mantle. And then his mantle fell and fell to Elijah, Elisha. So Elisha took the mantle. Elisha had to continue the ministry that was uh that that's, that was um the ministry that the, the father, the spiritual father, so to speak, has started. Elisha continued. It was Elisha that not that, that now anointed Jehu and also anointed uh as a herald to be king over the nation of syria long story culture uh it was jehu that now killed jezebel although he's still under the influence of the anointing of elijah but it was now uh, it was now conducted by another person it was still in the the anointing of elijah but conducted by another person now Jezebel eventually died, and the Bible told us that dog licked her bone. There, there was nothing remaining to be buried. Dogs ate her bone. Dogs ate her, according to the prophecy of Elijah. It was Elijah that prophesied that this house is going to die, and it happened that way. But can I shock you? In the book of Matthew, chapter number 11, the Bible told us this is the testimony of Jesus by himself. Concerning the man by the name John, he said, if you will receive it, he said, this John the Baptist is the Elijah that is to come. John, ch Matthew chapter 11, verse 14. He said, if you will receive it, this is Elijah which was first to come. Speaking about John the Baptist, Matthew 11, verse 14. Jesus said that John is the Elijah that was going to come. In Malachi chapter number 4 verse 5, the Bible said, Before the great and the terrible day of the Lord, I will send forth the spirit of Elijah that will turn the heart of the father back to the children and the heart of the children back to the father. I said, let's I smite the earth to the cause. Now you see, Elijah was to come back. Elijah was to come back. Pay close attention. And in Matthew, in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 5, Elijah was to come back. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 14, the Bible told us that Jesus said, John is the Elijah that is to come. John is the reincarnated Elijah that is to come. If we want to be plain with our words, John is the reincarnation of Elijah because he carried the anointing he carried the mantle of that belongs to Elijah. He carried the mantle and then he carried the assignment as well. Why did John have to come as at this time? Number one, to prepare the people for, the, for Jesus. Because Elijah had the anointing to, to make kings and then to coronate kings. And you saw that John the Baptist did baptize Jesus thereby thereby opening his heaven opening the heaven of jesus for the holy ghost to come in the bible told us that immediately after he was baptized in matthew chapter 3 from verse 17 the heavens were open and a voice started to speak the holy ghost came upon jesus in form of a dove and then voice started to speak from heaven to 
to confirm that Jesus was the Christ and Jesus is the son of God after he was baptized by John the Baptist. Just like Elijah also made king by his anointing. Now, moving further, Elijah was ordained to be the forerunner of Christ. Elijah was, John was ordained to be the forerunner of Christ. He was sent for that purpose and he was also to terminate the Jezebel that have risen in their generation. Because as Elijah came back, so the spirit of Jezebel also came back through the woman called Herodias. The Bible told us that Herodias was the brother to the was the wife to the brother of Herod. And she married Herod. She started sleeping with Herod. Even though she was not the wife of Herod. John knew this. John could perceive within himself that there is something similar like I've seen before. Jezebel was this, the mother of high lot, or the mother of her lot, the mother of prostitution, the mother of lawlessness. There is something similar like I've seen before. And the Bible said this time, John went to go and confront them and to address the situation. And he ended up losing his head. The woman who made a vow that just as, Eli just as uh, Elijah in the book of 1 Kings chapter number 18, cut off the heads of the prophet of Baal. And in 1 Kings chapter 19, the Jezebel promised Elijah that he would do that thing to him, just as he did to the prophet of Baal. In the book of John, the head of John the Baptist was beheaded. That is to say, the Jezebel that came in the form of the wife, the woman that Herod took and was sleeping with, Remember the battle and continue the transgenerational battle or the reincarnated battle and eventually have the head of John the Baptist removed. It is one of the reasons Jesus was speaking and said, what did you went out to see? Do you think there is a leaf that is shaking with reed? No, he said more than that. Amongst all the prophets that was born, he said no one that is as great as John the Baptist. Anyone that be born by a woman, he said, no one that is as great as John the Baptist. But why did John the Baptist die like that? Why? Because he didn't know who he was on the inside. Child of God, I want you to understand that the confrontations that is in your life that you cannot explain, the battles that you're going through that you cannot explain, you know, you can't explain why. You can't explain why. Sometimes you're anointed, but you can't explain why such confrontations. Why such battle? Why the delay? Why is it that you're praying and it appears like it's not yielding any result? Why is it that there's this particular challenge that is just there continuously in your life and in your home? Why? The reason is because... The battle is transgenerational. The battle reincarnates itself. But I come to let you know tonight, every battle that you'll be fighting, that you cannot tell where it comes from, that you cannot tell how it started, this night it comes to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. The God of heaven is stepping upon it. The fire of God is, is entering it. The God of heaven is matching the sources of those battles. The power behind the battles and the confrontations and the fight that is in your life that you cannot tell. God is bringing it to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing is bringing them to an end. The power of God is bringing them to an end. The fire of God is bringing them to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are looking at transgenerational battle. A lot of people cannot tell why life seems to be the way it is with them. They are faced with challenges that they cannot tell where it's coming from. As a matter of fact, they have no clue. They have no idea. They have no idea. They have no idea. In the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter number, Psalms chapter number 91, Psalms chapter number 82, the Bible told us, he said, they know not, neither will they understand. He said, so they walk on in darkness. He said, for all the foundation of the earth is out of course. All the foundation of the earth is out of course. Those battles that you cannot understand, sir, is called transgenerational battle. Battles that you seem to have inherited from your ancestral knowledge, from the family you came from, from the household you came from. These are what we call transgenerational battle. In the book of uh, uh, Lamentation chapter 5 from verse 7, the Bible said our fathers have sinned and, and they are not. He said, but we have bore their iniquity. 
Say, servant have ruled over us. He said, we get our bread at the peril of our lives. He said, the, he said the, the gray hair of the aged men are no longer regarded. The gray hair of the aged men are no longer respected. Because of the sword of the wilderness, there are so much famine. He said, war to us. He said, for we are undone. The battles became much and they cannot define how it started. They cannot tell where it is coming from. They cannot tell where it is heading to. It is called transgenerational battle. But tonight, yours is going to come to an end. How do you know when battles are transgenerational? Number one, when it is unexplainable. When it is unexplainable. Take for instance, a lady who got married as a virgin became uh, was just suddenly buried. No, no baby. Got married as a virgin. The husband have never slept with another woman. And all the ladies who were doing abortion while they were growing up, who've abused their body, abused themselves, got married after her and had their children. And they produced. But the one who kept herself is looking for baby. How can you explain that? Where is that coming from? Where is that coming from? When you cannot explain, where you cannot tell, your parents, and you know, there are some battles, okay, they are hereditary because you look at the knowledge. We are coming there. You look at the knowledge and you saw the same traces, the same syndrome in the life of other people that are in the family. But on these accounts, no trace, no symptom, nobody has had the problem. It just all of a sudden started with you. This battle could either be an enemy fighting you somewhere, or this is a battle that is transgenerational. Something that is transgenerational. Something that you inherited. Number two. Number two way to, to identify um, a transgenerational battle is when you look to the bloodline, when you look to the family, you may find out that there is someone that has been there that has been in the place where you are now. There is somebody that the same problem has confronted before. There is somebody that was faced with the same challenge before. And now it has come to your turn. It is an indication that this is a transgenerational battle. My prayer for you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ who cannot die. Every transgenerational battle. Battles you, you inherited. Battles that reincarnated right now is broken off your life. The strength and the influence and the impact of the battle over your life, your body, your system, your soul is terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. The influence and the impact of this battle that were inherited, that stem from your ancestral lineage, that stem from your father's time, that came from your grandfather's time 10 generations ago, 100 generations ago, they come to an end tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The God of heaven, bring this battle to an end. The fire of God, bring this battle to an end. The power of God, bring this battle to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. When the thing is similar in the family, take for instance the barrenness that was in the knowledge of Abraham. Abraham's father had Abraham at the age of 70. Abraham was called by God at 75 without a child. 16 years, or, uh, some years later, he had the first son, Ishmael, and later, have uh, 100 years later, had Isaac while he was 100 years old. And then moving on, Isaac also was faced with the same problem. Married to um, married to Rebecca, and then the woman was barren. She was barren. Isaac had to entreat God for the woman, and then she had two children. One Esau, the other one Jacob. Jacob happened to be the one that God chose to carry the baton of the blessings. The Bible told us that Jacob had also married two wives. Jacob married two wives. The both of them were barren. That is a symptom that you need to look into. It may not be issue of barrenness only. What about financial level? Your father was intelligent, hardworking, but died broke. Your parents, your, mom, your mother, your, your, your uncle, you know, your relations, as you look around the stream of your family, you find out that there were people were there that were hardworking, that were intelligent, you know, but they died broke. And right now you are handsome. 
you are hardworking, you are intelligent, you will not die broke in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not die broke. Your case will never be the same. Your case will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord that changes things. God have the capacity to turn life and event, to turn situation around. Is going to turn your, your event and your situation around for good in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not die broke. 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 Kala brakos kadabalantash. Zaka patalakate. Zikata palakataya. So there are about to see. One of the reasons we keep encouraging God's people to be strong. We encourage you to do your best to fight and win. Not just only to fight, but to win whatever comes your way. Fight until you win. Is because sometimes death, your death is not the end of the battle. The problem can reincarnate with you. Or it can extend to your children because you refuse to crush it. Why is the devil troubling mankind today? He was not crushed from the beginning. If he was crushed from the beginning, he won't, he won't be here to trouble mankind now. But God did that for a reason. You need to fight. You need to crush it. Satan the devil came as a serpent before. But because of longevity, he appeared as 700 dragons. In revelation it has grown it has mustard wings that battle is coming to an end i don't know the battle you may be going through in your own case in your own life in your own situation in your own family i don't know what the battle is that you people may have inherited but i came to join my faith with you and to lend my voice with your voice and to make a declaration that the God of heaven brings this battle to an end. The God of heaven break the backbone of the force and of the power behind them. The God of heaven break the forces of the power behind them in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, how do you overcome transgenerational battle? Number one is to seek God. Is to seek God. Number one, you seek God. If you do not seek God, child of God, you do not have the capacity to bail yourself out of the situation of life, out of what life will bring your way. One must seek God. One must seek God. The Bible told us in the book of Chronicles um, that the man by the name Jabez, he was struggling from the curse that the mother put on him because of the name that he carried. So he called on the Lord God of heaven. And the Bible told us that God gave, granted him his heart desire. The man became great. The man became worthy. Seek God. Have you not toiled enough? Have you not labored enough? Have you not tried many things enough? Have you not tried the doctors and every other thing enough? Seek God. If you seek God, you will be enabled. You will be enabled by the Holy Spirit. To come out from that battle. How do you seek God? Number one is to give your life to him. You have to, you have to surrender your life to Jesus. There are too many people asking the Lord to come and intervene in battles where they have no relationship with him. There are too many people asking the Lord to come and intervene in the affairs of their life. Meanwhile, they have no relationship with this God. So you must give your life to Christ. When you give your life to Christ, confess him as your Lord and Savior. Believe everything that scripture said about him. The Bible said he will give you the power to become the son of God. In the book of John 1 and verse 12, the Bible said as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. You must seek him. That's number one. Number two, having sought the Lord, take advantage of the instrumentality of prayer. Take advantage of the instrumentality of prayer. One of the reasons people are confused when some other people say, God just spoke to me. God just said this. God just did this. They are confused. They don't want to believe it. The reason is because they don't spend their time praying. It is in the place of prayer you receive instruction. Of the next line of action to take the next step to take the next thing to do for god to grant you that required breakthrough it is in the place of prayer that god speaks to you and guides you 
so that you know the next thing to do to step into your breakthrough in the place of prayer you have to pray you have to pray don't get confused about your life it may not have explanation for the now what you are going through may not have explanation for the now but surely it is coming from somewhere you have to pray number three you have to cultivate good character and attitude you know wrong behavior wrong attitude help to strengthen problem help to strengthen some problem in the lives of some people and it helps to make the problem remain it helps to make the the problem to stay with them and never to leave them some certain attitude from the life of a certain individual it helps their problem to remain and never to go away so one must cultivate good character good character have the ability to help you so that the devil have no ground over you the book of john chapter 14 verse 30 jesus said behold the prince of this world coming he said but he have nothing in me in other words he's powerless against me because there is no none of his property none of his nothing that belongs to him that is in me so whenever these forces are coming yeah, they know you before. Yes, they, there is an issue before. There's a covenant. There's an agreement. There is something that you, you, yourself and your parents were having with them before. Now they are coming for you. Whenever they come and they find out that you are clean, the Bible said they have nothing in you. I'd like to pray for you. Wherever you are tonight, in the name of Jesus, I declare an end to the battle. Whatever battle you're going through, whatever challenge, whatever situation that you seem to be going through, I declare an end on it now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, surely there is an end. And the expectation of, he said, and the expectation shall not be cut off. Right now, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. The battle that is in your home, in your marriage, is coming to an end. There's a lady, there is something that is in your stomach, is swollen. The Lord is removing it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is giving you the baby that you so desire. The Lord is giving you fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus Christ, I see there is a curse. Somebody had tried to put a curse upon you so that between now and 12 years, you'll be struggling, looking for baby. You know, you leave, a mar you leave your marriage and then move over to another one and then move over to another one. But I'm making a decree on your behalf today by the power of the living God, by the power of the risen Jesus, that, that decree those curses that decree that curse is broken off your life it will not take root in your life it will not bear fruit in your life you are released from curse you are released from yoke you are released from spell in the name of jesus christ you are free in the name of jesus you are free you are free baraga banto kalarash is katabato sala shakata parada zakata palakato zikete ke lukata bragada gele bosha izato kalesha shapakata pala now there is somebody under the sound of my voice i'm seeing you in the area of the east the lord is just marching down a strong force that has been against your family that has been against you preventing you guys from rising up you know, I see you that you were, you look like as though you were once a farmer, but you relocated out of your, your, your state and you moved to another state in the West, in Nigeria. And then I'm seeing that the Lord is just crushing by reason of your connection with this broadcast. The Lord crush has just crushed the terror, the terribleness of your family. The one who poses as a terror, God has just crushed them. God has crushed them and has released you. Ancient battle is over ancient battle is over i'm looking at your family i'm seeing your sisters there are three ladies that your mother there are three ladies that are married there are there are some i'm not seeing in marriage house there are three ladies that are married among them is a teacher among them is a doctor i'm seeing that the lord is crushing the strong man that is in your family you have a doctor you have a sister who is a doctor not like a professional doctor but she works in the hospital she's not in the country there's another one that is in nigeria i see her right with the writing pen 
the lord said that she's a teacher the lord said i should tell you that the struggle and the cause that has been in your family has just been broken and has been destroyed breakthrough has entered light has entered miracles have entered breakthrough have entered light has come into your family what has not been working before begin to war there's a favor god is going to give you there's a miracle favor that god will release to you that miracle shall land you in a place where you never expected to be in life your time has come your time for breakthrough your time for miracle your time for deliverance it has come receive that miracle receive that breakthrough right now in the name of jesus christ right now i confront reincarnated battle battles that follow through with your father your mother and then extend it to your life right now by the power and by the force of the anointing i declare that it is over i declare that it is over i declare that it is over the lord himself put an end to the oppression in your life the lord himself put an end to the oppression now listen to me you see jezebel is going to come later in the future as a matter of fact it's already around the bible calls it mystery mother of harlots mystery mother of sorcery also she's going to come back according to the book of revelation and the witnesses that god is also going to bring in the future elijah is inclusive two witness one speaks of moses representing the law the second one speaks of elijah representing prophet bible said one have the ability to 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 command rivers to control the rivers while the other ones have the ability to call that fire from heaven and the bible said if any man should stretch their hand against them the bible says so shall they be killed they'll come back again they will prophesy for many days they will prophesy for three years and six months child of god you see the battle just seem like it's, it continues but we are at the time where the rain and the end of jezebel will come every transgenerational battle ends in your time it will not proceed with you neither will it extend to your children is it a battle of poverty is it the battle of financial breakthrough? Is it the battle of marital st stability and settlement? I decree an end upon it today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, right now, I'm about to call it a quit. Now, as the Lord bless you, as the Lord gives you testimonies, as the Lord touches you, as the Lord gives you miracle, endeavor to share the testimony. Take advantage of our of a phone number and then our social media handle and then make sure to testify our social media handle is on your screen make sure to testify of what the lord has done for you make sure to let the world know as you do the lord will bless you in the name of jesus christ now i also want to implore you to uh, endeavor to be in church this sunday no matter what you are doing make sure to be in the house of the lord worship your creator this sunday and the lord will bless you